Hello there, I'm Michael Giblin with FiddlerShop.com and this is a video for our dear customer, Fawn. I have three of the Holstein Workshop level violins for you to listen to. This first one is the Workshop Amati. It is a narrow uh, body violin. It's a little skinnier. Skinny. Up second, this is the Holstein Workshop Canone. It has the Peter Infeld strings on it. Pies. And up third, this is the Holstein Workshop, Lord Wilton. This has dominant strings on it. All right, I'll switch back and forth, and the card will tell you which one I'm on. Um, well, I, I think my favorite of the three is this uh, workshop, Lord Wilton. Uh, for me, it had just a little bit more warmth, a little more roundness, um, 
of tone. I thought the Amati is a, that one was a surprisingly good Amati. It's, it's a little bit, I mean, it's all, they're always kind of on the sweet, a little bit delicate side. Um, that one was, 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 was kind of gentle, maybe also just compared to when I got to the Canone. The Canone was very powerful, loud. The sound is a little, little squeezed perhaps, a little tight of a sound, not exactly my favorite. Some of that is the pie strings are perhaps a little overkill on that instrument. Um, sometimes it, it's always, sometimes they sound great on the, the canones, sometimes they don't. Um, and so it was very, very powerful, still a little bit um, too bright of a sound a little bit. And so then I think when I got to this Lord Wilton, it just sounds a little more open, sounds um, uh, a little bit, yeah, just rounder, not harsh at all. The, the second question I think you asked about was bows. And um, I'm playing on this bow by Imberti. He's one of the um, Brazilian cohort bow makers that we, we have here. Um, I really like these bows. There's lots of different price points. Um, we generally say rule of thumb is sort of reserve about a quarter to maybe a third of your budget that you spend on violin for your bow. So that's sort of a, just a good ballpark to keep in mind. Um, when it relates to the Ming Zheng Zhu instruments, those ones generally are kind of dark and so just something with like a nice bit of resonance, a little bit of clarity is, a, is a, something to probably keep in mind. Not all of the Ming Zheng Zhu instruments are that dark. Um, some of them are very well balanced. And one school of thought is that you of course should pair your bow with your instrument so that they're very complementary. So that's something to keep in mind. I sort of also think there's still something to be said that a good bow is a good bow and it doesn't really matter which instrument uh, it plays, that it will sound good, it will enhance any instrument. Um, take that with a grain of salt because it's not 100% true <laughs> every time either. Um, so uh, that I, I do like there's, um, I've got links for these, these bows by these Brazilian makers. Um, I generally still really like Pernambuco and I prefer that over carbon fiber bows, although they have made great advancements in recent years, especially. Um, but my, my just traditional, my background is still using Pernambuco bow and so I, I still think it's the way to go. Um, but I can be a, an old fuddy dud sometimes too. So. Um, I hope that was helpful. I generally, uh, I, I know it's, it's hard to say this one would, would, this bow would sound good on this instrument, but it wouldn't sound good on that instrument. Um, there's lots of options. I think the best is if you can try something, we do uh, in-home trials with bows. If you can feel it yourself, play it on your instrument, that's generally the best, uh, best option. All right, enough of my ramblings. Thanks so much for watching all this, and we look forward to seeing you at feathershop.com.